right? Mm -hmm. His secret society is the one running the show. Mm. So now we looking at George Herbert Walker Bush. And he was going there. He's skull and bones, right? Skull and bones. Mm -hmm. Common denominator pops up. Mm -hmm. When you say skull and bones, you talking pirates. Oh. <laughs> See, I, I didn't even make that connection, but that's what they do in piracy. Right. Now, this is also being told to us in the public domain with an admiralty flag. Mm. We the have admiralty we flag, right, the admiralty flag staked on the land under salvage law of the high seas to pillage the people on the land. Who idea was it? It had to be a pirate. Mm. Who was the best pirates? The conquistadors. And who are they? I'm, I'm trying because they in the, the comments dropping who right. it is. I'm, yeah. Can't the doors is Black and Moors and Tony uh, Moors, <laughs> right? The right. Tony Moors is the figurehead, the front of the Black and Moors. The Black and Moors don't want to be seen, so they put the Tony Moors up to do their dirt because they relatives. Yeah, because Moors is the one who showed them how to get over here. Now, when you go back to Cortez. What's the first thing Cortez did when he got to South America? Start killing motherfuckers, right? Mm -hmm. Out the gate, that's an open declaration of war. Yeah. Who ended the war? They did. Did you where you find that at? You it, you read anywhere where somebody oh, where ended, ended the war? Nah, they, they didn't say it ended. Nobody said it ended. The contract was predicated up on the ceasefire. Yo, okay. Now that's starting to click. Okay, so you keep going, keep going. So now you have to go to something called the Paris Accord. The Paris Accord is known in the Moorish community as a treaty of peace and friendship. Mm. And if you look at the Paris Accord and the motivator for it, what motivated it? It was a ceasefire agreement. Because the British was robbing um, the Moors on the high seas when they was re re returning with wealth that they had captured over here. Oh, wow. <laughs> In turn, the Moors, the conquistadors, was robbing the ships of the British when they got done robbing the other Moors. Wow. Right? All this is in the paperwork. This is actually the backstory. They were fighting each other, and they fought to a stalemate. And when you had a stalemate, in order to start over with a new chess game, you both have to see the game is over. Now we got to start with a fresh game. The fresh game is the new contract. Mm. The new contract is an agreement between the British in the uh, crown and a corporation called Al Morak. The uh, co corporation known as Al Morak headquarters was in a city called Fez. Mm. Fez is the capital or one of the major cities, I should say, of modern day Morocco. But modern day Morocco wasn't, wasn't Morocco before the 50s. What was it? It was grouped in with Tunisia and I think Algeria uh, or Algiers as as what they call um, Al Maghrib, right? The problem that they have, they already got kicked out of Africa. Now Europe is kicking them out of Europe. They need somewhere to go, right? Now, their offspring can be seen, tip or tip. Prime example, right? Mm -hmm. You can look at his history because the Arabs is the initiators of the transatlantic slave trade in the uh, the sacking of African villages to get what they called black labor. They called it black labor because anybody that's classified as a slave mean they have a debt. And debt equals slavery equals death. So you become blackened by being captured under the rules of war. Yeah. And yeah, I keep telling people we were prisoners of war. The Indians were just prisoners of war. They couldn't have killed all right. 
So the whole time since 1492 to 2012, we've been in a perpetual state of warlock. Mm. When you locked in war, you don't have access to your wealth. So they created the fiat to put levies and liens against the estate of the POWs. Right. Under under the under the uh, idea that they're never going to realize that they are the actual heirs to the estates that we are holding hostage. They're not going to realize that. And at the close of the age, had they not come to the realization that this day shit, they forfeit for lack of a claim. Mm. Right? Because all of the at the close of the contract, all debts is due in the following Jubilee year, 2022. Now, isn't is now is the the go around with that is the fact that they didn't give proper disclosure, or would you say they gave disclosure? We were just looking in the wrong places for the disclosure. They've been telling us the whole time exactly what they was doing to us, but it was coded. Mm. We didn't know we didn't know how to read the code, and that's why they had to make sure that they constantly reiterate ignorance of the law is no excuse. If you don't know the code, nigga, go learn it. Mm -hmm. That's what they didn't want us reading. Right. Now, the other reason they didn't want us reading is because if we ever figure out what a legal dictionary is, a medical dictionary, and an etymology dictionary, we are going to have the blueprint to unlocking the entire puzzle. Right. So when the uh, leadership that's organic to the land is held in um, indisposed, that means that they can't walk the land as free men and exercise their jurisdiction. Right. If they can't exercise the jurisdiction, they have to call forth the next available chief to look at the problem and see if he can figure it out. Hey, man. I need you to come over here and look over this legal work because I'm seeing something, but I can't quite make out what I'm looking at. Right. So then we go through a series of passing the, 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 uh, the problem around to different chiefs. This goes back to Noble Drew Ali saying in the oral statements and prophecies, I'm going to leave these people in power long enough for y'all to learn how to run the government. When you understand in the legalese, the deceptive language of legalese and how it is cross-referenced with etymology and how it is also cross-referenced with, with, with medicalese, you cross these languages and then you unlock the uh, colloquial language, the common language. In this case, is American English. If we was in London, it would be uh, uh, the Queen's English. It's a different English, but mm -hmm. they both English. Mm -hmm. Right? Now, we don't just, the authority on uh, what we call colloquial modern English is Noah Webster's Dictionary. That's the authority. The authority for the Queen's English is the Oxford University Dictionary. Mm. Right? And the Hans Word dictionary, dictionary of Etymology is the Encyclopedic Dictionary set that they never want you to get your hands on. That's... Now you look at the price of the is that book. That's the one that's crazy. Yeah, that's the one that's crazy expensive. Yeah, when you look at the price of the books, anything that will accelerate our learning and seeing the problem is priced out of our reach. We we can't pay, we can't afford that money. Right? The average person don't have the time because they keep us occupied with trifles, with trivials. And they keep us emotionally masturbated for the ones that's righteous enough to stand up to the enemy. They gave us something called religion. Mm -hmm. So no Noble Drew Ali wrote in the Circle Seven about a religious controversy. So that was my warning not to get into a religious controversy with anybody because it's dogma. Mm -hmm. Which takes me to Albert Pike. Albert Pike is the one who generated the dogma for the Red Lodge, Scottish Rite, 32 degrees, honorary 33rd, masquerading as the founding father that we call George Washington. Mm. 
The real George Washington was born in Barbados. I was say, the, fraud, the fraud is allegedly born either in Virginia or France, depending mm -hmm. on which angle they want to send you on. He's born in both places, according to their records. In France, they called him Adam Weishaw. Mm -hmm. You know him as the founder of the Bavarian Illuminati. But mm -hmm. when he's over here, we call him mm -hmm. Albert Pike. Mm -hmm. Now, the pike is a fish. Right? This is a code. Because they told the so-called Christ told his disciples, I will make you fisher of men. Right. In order to catch fish, you need hooks. So King James said, watch the letter J. Because it used to be straight. <laughs> now it's got a now it's a hook. Now it's got a hook. The funny thing about it is James is I own this in its original form, Latin. But when you translate it into English it becomes James. But the definition of it in the original language is fish. Wow. It's also the same James Jones, which is Jonas or Jonas. Mm-hmm. Jonas is like saying more than one fish. It's a plural. Mm. Right? So when you start looking at these things, you're like, wait, 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 wait. This is not right. This is incorrect. So then he'll say, hey, I'm going to call a couple of my brothers over here and see if they see what I'm looking at. Because this can't be what I'm looking at because this is what I'm looking at. It's telling me a particular direction that somebody is coming at us it's a warning right right the side effect of the religious controversy is another chapter called misery misery is the thing that keeps us from seeking the liberation because we would rather be comfortable under control of somebody else than to be temporarily uncomfortable to be under our own control and having a fan for ourselves. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. So now we face with the um, dilemma. Upset the peace to establish justice and be dis uncomfortable for a period of time in order to give your descendants eternal comfort. Or go along to get along and wait till they fall apart and hope that you get something out the deal. Them the only two positions. So from what I was looking at, I said, if I make the claims, all I got to do then is start having the different chiefs on the land come look at this. Hey, ain't the contract is up. Now, the only way this contract not up is two ways. They held up every part of the agreement, which we know they never held up a single part. We can't find a treaty that's ever been honored because all of them is in litigation mm -hmm. as we speak. <laughs> it wouldn't be in litigation. Had they been honored. Right. So now that give us what we call superior claim on the contract. The only problem is we have to figure out how do we apply superior jurisdiction in order to secure a superior claim. We have to follow the laws of nature and go back to our original culture. They gave us a remedy in their system during the life of the contract. But when the contract expired, the remedy expires with it. So mm -hmm. they never honored it, which means that I can close the contract out at any time I become aware in my life that the contract is predicated up on fraud, deception, and the theft of the wealth of the nations, and that the intentions is never to honor the contract. The last one, the intention to never honor the contract becomes self-evident. That means it presents its own self as evidence based off consistent actions from the occupier to never honor a single contract. If they've never honored one, they continuously make them. They never honor them, but they always hold us to them. That means that they never had any intentions of honoring any other contracts. Mm. Right? That's it, it proves itself. You don't have to prove it. Right. Show me the contract they upheld. Right? Nobody never foreclosed on the first contract. Treaty of Peace and Friendship. Right? 
Now, this is what's, what's upsetting to the Moors that didn't understand what me and Taj was talking about completely. Because Noble Drew Ali in the came, the contract was in 100% effect. So he gave us both the remedy and the solution at the same time. Right? He's the one that was teaching everybody about the 1099s, right? I'm not saying it was him. But. Um, well, he, he didn't take it that far. Right? What you get with the Moorish literature is what, that's all he got. Anything else is in the Moorish newspapers that's now almost impossible to find unless you go find them on microfilm in the old library. Mm. But there used to be a daily Moorish newspaper that the Moorish Science Temple put out, or the Moorish Temple of Science used to put out under Noble Drew Ali. Those are been defunct. They've been closed down. There was also a group of uh, 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 Black Star Press had a newspaper that came out. I think his was weekly under the UNIA. In a lot of his, those, you still have to go to microfilm to find them, but they're there. Right? And so, but the Moorish literature is telling us how to navigate the contract until we in a position to run the government and claim the contract and overthrow the government, the, the imposter government. It's not our shit, right? They holding us in under admiralty jurisdiction. They holding us under salvage rights. Mm -hmm. And they listing us as the property of the landmass that crashed into their ship. The claim is preposterous on its face. They listen. That that's right, what Malcolm but, was saying was the Plymouth Rock. We right. Didn't land on Plymouth Rock. Yeah. yeah. So now, if it's ridiculous on its face, all we have to do, one of us, walk in there and say, "Hey, that's ridiculous. That don't even apply." Nobody did it because nobody knew it was going down. It didn't happen over here. It's called the Paris Accord because it wasn't signed over here. Mm. It was signed in Paris. Right. Now notice, in Paris, you got the Eiffel Tower. It's a homonym. The name of the city of Paris is Par Parthodine of Isis, or Par Isis for short, or even shorter, is Paris. That means it's the city of Isis. Mm. Right? So now when we go, that's telling us to go back and look at the Isis story. Who fell? Osiris. Osiris fell at the hands of who? Set. This Inky and then Lil. I was just about to say that's the same exact story. <laughs> this Inky and then Lil. Right. Right? So now, Horus becomes Tehuti. Because he is the firstborn of the earthborn, parthogenic son of Isis. Mm. And that's what made them call her Mary, the rebellious woman. Because she made she went on about her business and made a male child without consulting with the masculine figures who wanted to subjugate her and her daughters. And he would be the champion of the mother and the sisters and be the firstborn of the earthborn parthogenic male sons of the women of the earth. So when you see Tahuti, he's coming just to get the women back their shit. He don't want nothing. The women going to take care of what they need to take care of. And Tahuti is just going to facilitate. Mm -hmm. So I'm facilitating my ass off. To who he call. Mm -hmm. Right? Now, all of the codes, they tell you Isis, but the the character should be Moses. Mm -hmm. When they tell you Moses, the character should be Isis. That's what we don't get. The Isis character in the New Testament, the name Isis is Jesus. I E S O U S. Mm -hmm. Right? But if you don't know that the contract is a riddle, and the riddle, right, is a key to the kingdom. And the kingdom is the kingdom that comes at the at the closing of the age, the last days. Right? In order for this to be uh, effectuated. You have to be a Melchizedek priest. Well, I'm a graduate Melchizedek priest under Malachi Z. York. Right? As a Melchizedek priest, now 
I can exercise the rights of the priesthood to claim every priesthood. Mm. Right? So now I need a political degree. That means I had to get a law degree without getting a degree. I had to learn enough law to get a degree, but don't get the degree. I don't need the paper. I need the knowledge. Mm. Right? Now, once I got the priest degree, and then I got the um, the law degree, right? Now, all I need is the understanding of the workings of the tribe and the family. The leader of the family is the KNG. No vowels in there. Notice that. No I. No vowels. KNG. No vowels. Because when you transliterate it, you got to add vowels according to Grimm's Law Grammar. Now, in Grimm's Law Grammar say all vowels are interchangeable in translation and transliteration, right? So now I look at the word K-N-G, most people see king. Mm -hmm. I see Congo. Mm. No vowels, so you, you, okay, gotcha. Right. So when I add the vowels in, I added two O's. Right? K-O-N-G-O. -O. Everybody else only, they selfish. <laughs> Think about I. So all they're going to put in there is an I. K-I-N-G. Mm -hmm. you, you ain't going to get there. Because the key is the Congo key. Every landmass have a Congo. But most of us don't know this because we need to see ancient maps in order to know it. Mm. The average person is never going to see an ancient map in their lifetime. So how, we can't expect them to figure it out. So Big Mama going to have to pick a son, one of her boys, whose only job it is, is to figure this shit out. And then between Big Mama and Mama, they're going to put him in the condition where all he can do is learn their required lessons of how to read the culture to find the problem. Right. And Sometimes it requires you to be in, put in prison for a while. What you gonna do with it? They throw you in there. You can't you can't escape the time. It's gonna be there. Even if you escape the prison, they gonna come find you, lock you up, and give you more time on top of that, and make sure you don't escape no more. Mm -hmm. You can run on for a long time, but sooner or later they gonna chop your ass down because you can't outrun the long arm of the law. Right. This is what they tell us. Right. So. Is you get two options. Study the problem until you figure it out or run for it. Run for us, run. Right? <laughs> and so here we are, those who don't know me and don't know how sincere I am. I want all our people to get all of their shit. I don't give a fuck about nobody else. But if they want us and they got a nickel somewhere and two pennies. I want them to have a nickel and two pennies, not because I just want them to have it. It's they shit. Mm -hmm. I think everybody got a right to their own shit that they already earned. Right? So even if they don't agree with me, I don't care. If you got something coming, I want you to get whatever the fuck you got coming, good, bad, or indifferent. Right? So when we get done putting the statuses in the public domain. What do you mean, Rob? This is all it is, is this simple. You go on your social media so you can have the time dated and stamp. I got a, I got a funny story about that. Cause you told me this, you put it on your page, like a few months back talking about this, post this, write this, write your name in this little blank section and put it on your IG. And I'm like, man, that shit too simple. <laughs> But I do know African proverbs say he was doing that back on Facebook a minute ago. Like, no, I do not agree to this. You just putting it on public record that you don't agree to. Maybe a new law that dropped or whatever. Now, all of the women over fifty, specifically those are seniors, sixty-five and older, <coughs> need a representative in the family. That means if if you know if you about your business, right? Everybody got a sister or a cousin that know that paperwork, how to keep business stuff in order, right? The uh, eldest female that the most of the people in the family can trace back to that's still living is the heir. 
all of the wealth is always coming through the motherland. Mm -hmm. But the right to reign um, as the alpha male comes through the fatherland. In the only way, that's why you got to have both the blood and the rights. Mm. Because before, the people without the blood stole the rights. Mm. So now, you need the and blood. that's what they were showing. You ever watch that, that show? Um, Lovecraft Country? That's what they were showing in there, how they basically stole. They ain't had the bloods, but they stole our rights, our lands, our, even our, you know, our magic. I don't know. Now, if, okay, Lovecraft Country. Go to, go to how they did it. They stole the family's grimoire. Mm. It's the family's book of life. It tells you who is who in the family. <coughs> and they have clues in there of how to recognize them when they come back. That's why they've been looking for the Messiah. They know where he at. Mm. <coughs> the day he's born, they know he being born. They already know from the stars and the alignment. Mm. Okay. Certain people born, all of the stars align in order to tell a story of who this individual will become if he makes it to maturity. That's how they kept killing the chiefs off at, as children. That's why they made what we call black on black crime so prevalent in the community because they ain't allowed to kill us, but guess what? They can put us up to kill us. Mm. They can put me up to come do something to you for their benefit. As long as I don't know what I'm doing, I'm going to follow through with it because I'm a ride or die motherfucker like that. Mm -hmm. But as soon as I find out, hey, wait a minute. That's my brother. Who is these niggas? Now I'm the problem. I'm the worst nigga. I questioned these niggas and nobody else was doing it. Right? I'm the problem now. So I'm not going to participate in their games and I separate, step back and say, I don't want no parts of it. And then all the other chiefs said, hey, hey, we need some help with this problem. And you just sitting there. What you going to do? Right? Because all of the chiefs is on deck. There's nobody that's not involved in this shit. Whether you know it or you don't know it, you either part of the problem, part of the solution. There is no middle ground. You either one of the righteous or you one of the wicked. You either part of the motherfucking wheat or you the motherfucking chafe. There ain't nothing in the middle. Ain't nothing in the middle. Facts, yeah. I don't give a fuck what your skin like, how tall you is, how fat you is. I don't care if your nose run all day, if you got red, red <laughs> eyes, green eyes, blue eyes. It don't fucking matter. Right. It's only two positions on the board. The right position and the wrong position. I don't want to be on the wrong position. And anybody that's willing to be righteous in the right position, I'm all with that. I'll teach you everything you fucking want to know. And if I don't know it, because I don't know everything, but I ain't that smart as I might seem to some people. I just study harder <laughs> than everybody else. But if I don't know it, I'm going to go find it out so I can help you.